When I was a young attorney, most most people that, you know, most clients that I came across or, or most people that I've talked to, you know, when they hear that I'm a public defender or a deputy public defender, they think that we're dump trucks. Particularly from trial judges who do uh, see the work of the federal defenders up close every day, that uh, the federal defender organizations do an excellent job of representing criminal defendants in our courts. Under the Sixth Amendment of our Constitution, individuals are granted the right to a fair and speedy trial with the assistance of counsel. Now prior to the 1963 Supreme Court case Gideon v. Wainwright, those who were too poor to afford legal assistance were not given any. After the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Gideon, states were obligated to give assistance to those who needed it. However, unlike an episode of Law and Order, our current public defender system is far from perfect. So today, let's explore the current status of the public defender system, the problems within it, and how it affects us. I think the notion of public defenders being overworked and not having enough time to do the work that they need to do um, is not entirely accurate. I know that our work is challenging. I mean, it's, it's hard work. We enjoy the work. We're dedicated to the work. Um, we spend a lot of our time in the courts. Under Amendment 6 of our Constitution, individuals in the United States must enjoy the right to a fair and speedy trial with the assistance of counsel. But before 1963, that was not the case. Under the landmark Supreme Court case Gideon v. Wainwright, the federal government mandated the usage of public defenders to those that could not afford one. Gideon argued that under the Sixth Amendment, the right to an attorney, the Due Process Clause of the Fifth Amendment, and the Fourteenth Amendment, no state shall deny its citizens' rights, which in this case was Florida, due process and equal protection. But in the past 30 years, there has been a rising misconception about what public defenders do and the pivotal role they play in the justice system. Um, if you, when you're starting with our office and you're a misdemeanor attorney, it's not uncommon for the misdemeanor attorneys to have over 100, 150 cases at minimum. Uh, sometimes they have up to 200. Um, that's because of the volume when it comes to misdemeanors. And that covers everything from trespassing, driving without a suspended license, all the little things from shoplifting on up. As a felony lawyer, it depends on where you're assigned uh, your volume. Usually the felony attorneys have anywhere between 25 to 30 felonies. The misdemeanor lawyers in a week can handle probably 50 to 100. Um, felony attorneys probably 25 to 50 and it varies on what area in Los Angeles County, what courthouse you're working on, what has heavier loads than others. Nationwide, the Public Defender's Office is represented in all stages of criminal proceedings, from adults accused of felony and misdemeanor criminal violations to juveniles prosecuted for alleged illegal misconduct. They have also expanded their legal services to include public outreach and programs to counsel at-risk youth. But it's not what public defenders do that make them significant, it's what they represent. Americans uphold the idea of fairness, and nowhere is this clearer than in the criminal justice system. We believe in the idea that law should be applied equally and that the punishment should fit the crime. And when taken to court, everyone deserves an equal chance at having a fair trial. And that's what public defenders allow. A fair trial due to a system of checks and balances on the criminal justice system. It guarantees that no agency, whether that be the district attorney's office or the police department, is allowed to operate unchallenged and unquestioned. Uh, we don't provide anywhere near enough lawyers to, uh, to cope with the rising number of individuals who are entitled to lawyers. 2.7. 2.7 is the percentage of federal criminal defendants who go to trial. Since the 1963 Supreme Court decision, America's prison population has grown more than tenfold from 217,000 inmates to 2.3 million, largely due to decades of the war on drugs and tough on crime policies. And it's been nearly impossible for public defense systems to keep pace. In 1973, the National Advisory Council issued a report recommending annual caseload maximums for public defenders. They are the only national recommendations of their kind, but are considered imperfect. And even so, these recommended caseload limits are consistently exceeded in public defenders' day-to-day -day practice. 
On average, a public defender would need 3,035 work hours, a year and a half to do a year's worth of work. In 2008, for every dollar that was spent on public defense, taxpayers spent nearly $14 on corrections. Public defender systems are also separated by their locality. A large reason as to why there is a difference in quality between public defenders is because of the location. A public attorney in New Orleans does not have the same amount of time to prepare as someone in Los Angeles. And a large reason for this is because of when the public attorney system was built and how much funding that attorney system has. Absolutely. So, and it, it's very important to understand that that $1 billion, although it sounds like a lot of money, is literally a drop in the bucket of the entire federal budget. It, the, the entire judiciary, which is what we're a part of, the third branch of government, is 0.2 of 1% of the entire budget. And that's a total budget of about $7 billion. Indigent defense accounts for right around a billion dollars of that amount. So this is an infinitesimal amount. If you go to other states like Georgia, they just opened up the first public defender agency in 2003, 2004. Um, that means that they didn't have a system like that. So they just created it and it takes a while to, to get everyone to believe in it, if that makes sense. I mean, they understood they needed it, but to get people to continue to fund it, to help those lawyers, not necessarily. So perhaps the Sixth Amendment is illustrated in our Constitution, but the current flaws in our system and the lack of funding is really harming our low-income constituents. But it's not a lost cause for them since there have been several improvements made recently in past years. But still, the only way to ensure that our rights are not infringed upon is to stand up and to take action today.